In the online notes, we talk about how it is convenient to compute the values of u at the next time step using a matrix operation. The matrix that is used to get from u at time t to u at time t plus delta t, called b in the notes, is tridiagonal. How do we create that matrix in MATLAB? First, let's define some parameters. d, the diffusion constant, dx and dt, the space and time steps respectively, and nx, the number of points in our space grid. We let a equal the diagonal values and b the off-diagonal values, and we create an nx by 1 vector for the diagonal and an nx minus 1 by 1 vector for the off-diagonals, and then use the MATLAB command diag to create the tridiagonal matrix b. As you may remember from the notes, we apply our boundary conditions by using the second and second to last values to compute the two edges. Now we run the program and check our value for A, our value for B, and see that the matrix B does indeed have the form that we wanted. To visualize it better, we can use the image as C command. However, notice that a lot of the entries of the matrix B are zeros. If you imagine taking a very large nx value, we would be using up a lot of memory with just zeros. Instead of doing this, we can use the sparse command, which basically squeezes out all the zeros and saves only the non-zero entries of b. This will help speed up your code. Now, we can use this matrix to simulate the one-dimensional Gear-Meinhardt model. In the simulation, we will plot the concentration of the two chemicals, u and v, after each time step. The initial conditions are a small perturbation away from the steady state, so when we run the code, it initially looks like nothing is happening, but as predicted by our analysis, patterns soon begin to form.